Welcome to the Rapid Bridge, connecting modern minds to the ancient truth of God's Word. It is our goal to connect the modern day people to the ancient truth of God's Word through current language as well as scientific and technological references. Hey, Mike here. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 6. So we will see the four horsemen now. It's important to note one discrepancy between the Old and New Testament and a possible resolution to this. Revelation lists the horsemen as conquest, war, famine, and death. Ezekiel, however, lists them as sword, famine, wild beasts, and pestilence or plague. Now, war and swords, yeah, weapons of war, clearly they're related. After all, these two men did speak different languages and lived nearly 700 years apart and in completely different cultures. Different wordings expected. Famine is listed in both, and a plague can be the physical embodiment of death. What's left is conquest and wild beasts. This can be resolved in a few ways. Maybe it's like that show Zoo, where animals rise up against humans, but I doubt that. Maybe this is talking about crops being conquered by locusts, and famine, then a resource war. Um, what is more likely is that this was going to be alluded to later in Revelation, the beast of the sea and the beast of the earth. The beast of the sea is a term for a political leader, and the beast of the earth is a religious leader who tricks you into worshipping the first beast. This would be a state-sponsored religion worshipping the government, even if unknowingly, and it is something that we see a lot in communism. Conquest and wild beast, using what we will see in a bit, could be a one-world communist takeover. Um, I watched the lamb open the first of the seven seals, and then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. And I looked out before me was a white horse, and his rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out and conquered, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Now, many believe this is Jesus. Uh, no, it's not. This would be a false savior who will conquer the land, and then there would be chaos following him. This man will have an appearance of purity and authority, but he will not be good. This could actually be the Pope, the United Nations, or some political leader somewhere. Um, interestingly, the Quran names this horseman as Imam al-Mahdi, a sort of religious leader. Um, right. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. And then another horse came out, a fiery red one. This rider was given the power to take peace from the earth and make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. Of course it was. Uh, this could be related to a conquering entity taking over the world. Uh, what about the second event could be a world war? Or it could be the aftermath of a totalitarian takeover. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there before me was a black horse. And its rider was holding a pair of scales in its hand. And then I heard what sounded like a voice among the living creatures. Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages. And six pounds of barley for a day's wages. And do not damage the oil or the wine. It's not surprising to see a family or a famine after war and bloodshed. But this one is holding a set of scales also. Could this be showing us that humanity is being judged 
or measured of its sin and that the famine is merely a punishment? Now the price of a loaf of bread being a day's wages, I couldn't imagine paying $250 for a single loaf of bread. Um, I don't even eat much bread. The point that the scriptures are trying to get across here though is that you will work all day all week and barely have enough just to survive on what is left over. Or as we call it, living paycheck to paycheck, as most of this country do. This could also be communist style rations. Hardly enough to live on as you work all day. So that's pretty clear. What about the oil and the wine? These are not as critical and are actually minor luxuries. You can totally live without wine or oil. So perhaps during this famine, the wealthy will be okay. I doubt a multi-billionaire will feel too much pain for spending a couple hundred dollars for a single meal. They probably do that all the time anyway. The lamb opened the fourth seal, and I heard a voice from the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked out and saw before me was a pale horse. The rider's name was Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, famine, plague, and by all the wild beasts of the earth. So here we come to the limitation of language translation. Um, Okay, so it's generally translated as pale or something like that. The actual word used meant a soft yellow green. This word is used to describe some kinds of grass in the Gospels. In this case, I think it's more referring to sick and decaying flesh. This is indicative of some plagues. You think the coronavirus is bad with a 2% death rate and less than 7 million deaths worldwide? Not that that's great, that's pretty bad. But now we're talking about something many times more deadly and contagious, killing over 2 billion people. No, COVID's not even in the same order of magnitude of pestilence as this pale horse. The only thing in history which has ever even come close to this would be the Black Death in the 1300s, which wiped out like a quarter of Europe. By some estimates, some say half. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar of souls that ha had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony that they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, will your judgments and inhabitants of the earth have their blood avenged? Then each of them was given a white robe and told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, had been killed just as they had. This is the resurrection of the martyrs. Up until this point, when you die, that's it. Until the resurrection. And that's not even for all believers yet. But only those who have given their lives for their faith. These people want to know when God will carry out this justice. And he's like, hold on. We're not done here yet. There's still more coming through. Yeah. So they are given white robes, which at the time of writing this book, uh, the book of Revelation, I mean, was a popular party attire for celebrations. Think of modern suits for men and dresses for women. That's the important impression here. I watched as the sixth seal was opened. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth, made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth, and figs dropped down from the fig tree as shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and every island was removed from its place. 
This is where things get really interesting. I'm sure this is just coincidental. But this is likely that it would look kind of like a black hole entering our solar system if it entered the right way and we fell through its event horizon. The gravitational stresses, optical distortion, stars in the sky appearing to come down to the horizon. Um, however, massive plate tectonics in the Earth's crust would explain this in a much more likely way. But you wouldn't be hiding in caves from this either, as we'll see in a minute. Stars falling would be material ejected from volcanic events. But the problem is that this account shows the sun is going dark first, you know, before these volcanic eruptions. Um, if our solar system and its orbit around Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, what you do orbit this, if we were to pass through a cloud of material, you'd see that order of events. The sun would go dark, and then things would carry on from there. The truth is, nobody really knows yet. Anyway, moving on. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves among the rocks and mountains. Um, they were called to be in the mountains and in the rocks. Fall on us and hide us from the faith of those, er, of he who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come. Who can withstand it? Basically, they are saying that dying in a landslide or an earthquake would be better than experiencing God's wrath. This issue with that line of thinking is that there is an afterlife. Death is not an escape. There will still be punishment and reward after it. But that's all I've got for now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it enlightening, please consider liking, subscribing, clicking the bell, and sharing these videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.